Hey guys, it's Rob Anime Caveman. Today I'm gonna be doing the 13th episode of Golden Comedy. And I gotta say, this episode made it seem like it was gonna be just a completely relaxing episode after some of the epic things that went down in season one. Because it was nice to see Asirpa teach Sugimoto more things about nature, about the Eno coach in regards to. In wintertime, that's where men shine because that's when they do hunting, but in the springtime, that's when the women and the Ionu tribes, um, that's where they shine because they do all the harvesting and planting and all that kind of stuff. So for one, I like that. It makes the world blending in the show much more immense because we get to find out more about Asipa's culture. And then simultaneously, I like how as the episode progresses, it took that... They took that little stepping stone and then it stepped even further because when it revealed that Noperambo, he's actually, it didn't actually necessarily explicitly say it, but when Tsunami was speculating that he could be a Russian partisan that's trying to lead some kind of revolution, not lead it, but support it, and that's why he tried to take the Ainu gold from these seven Ainus that tried to gain independence for the Ainu from the Japanese. That type of stuff made me like the show even more because it shows that it's gonna be ambitious and I'm by involve people from different nations. So that's another plus about this episode. It shows that this anime, there's gonna be more than meets the eye. And I like that kind of stuff, at least I hope. So all in all, positive things about the episode. And then aside from that, I like how it gets more characterization for Tsunami because when he's talking with this individual called Edo Guy to try to like fool anyone that tries to go after that tattoos by making these fake tattoo skins so that they can be thrown off. That was also nice showing that the antagonists, they're not just going to be standing on their heels trying to just like hunt for people in the tattoos. They're going to also try to throw them off. So that it can make chaos and make the quest of getting that too so much more easier using inventive ways of doing it. And I like that too. That should bring an extra angle into this anime as it progresses. So that's another plus. And then it had a lot of quirky scenes with Tsunami's all like, Oh, kitty, showing off that he has a soft spot for animals and making him feel like a character that leaves off the page writing-wise. So those are also more good elements about the show because it shows that he isn't just Mr. Serious all the time. He has a little playful personality within him when he's not in like super epic dangerous situations. So that's those are also that's more positives. And then the scenes that involved him the Edo guy, pretty much Edo guy just showing off his different outfits that he made. And then Tsunami just laughing, I was like, <laughs> this is so random as fuck. But that's what makes Golden Comedy so good. It at times takes these super serious characters, and when they're not focused on action, it puts them in hilarious situations that make it funny, because it kind of catches you off guard, but because the contrast between their serious self and their relaxed self is so hilarious that it gets a chuckle out of you. So, that's another reason why this episode resonated off of me. And then simultaneously, I like how this episode also gave off at least a bit more development for Tanigaki, getting more used to the Ainu lifestyle. And at the end, when he himself wants to help out Asirpa because it's fortune to the lady that tells him that one of the three men that are with Aspira is going to betray them. I like that because it was nice to see him go from against our main crew for the most part. So now after being helped out by the Ainu due to the mercy that Aspira showed him, he's um, he's now a helpful individual to our main crew and I like that kind of stuff. It shows you a good amount of character development for an individual in the show that isn't even a main character. So that's also something beautiful to see too. And that's what really makes this show stand out in comparison to other animes or mangas. The characters. And then when it's revealed at the end that the fortune teller lady is actually working with Tsunami, I was like, oh my goodness, this is not going to be fucking good. So I can't wait to see where this shit goes because damn, 
This anime is going to be lit when it gets into that kind of stuff. And I like that. That's going to give it an angle of unpredictability now that we have all these possible traitors. One of the people that are traveling with the main crew is a traitor. The fortune lady teller is a traitor. And it's like, damn, man, this shit's just so crazy. And it makes me wonder who in Tsukimoto's crew could it be? Could it be Shirashi that's a traitor? Or could it be that Ainu dude that's a traitor? Who the fuck knows, but I cannot wait to find out. And taking all this into cons- Oh, and the artwork. Now that we see, like, springtime, it's a nice contract from the wintertime. And it looks really, really beautiful and vibrant, the artwork. And then you even get to see some adorable moments with, um, Asipa when she, like, eats a lot of these vegetables that kind of gives you a black color after, like, eating it in the face. And then when, um, when Shirasi and, um, Sigima pointed out that she ate too much, that shit was hilarious. And I like that. It kind of makes it feel like a family-like dynamic, especially when Sugimoto was... Even though a lot of movies and shows do this where you put the the um, sheets on the person that you're taking care of or that you like. You, that shit was adorable when Sugimoto did that for Asirpa while she was asleep. And I like that kind of stuff. It really makes it the anime feel much more lively to have that kind of dynamics. And for all these reasons, I rate this episode 7.5 Hinas Hinas out of 10 because that, what more can you ask for in, in a character-centered episode? And then you even get some a few plot twists here and they're like, these type of episodes and other animes, they would be fucking normally boring because most enemies have bland characters and you're like, I just want to see them do epic shit. But with Sugimura, I see it, and even Tsuname, what, even when they're not doing epic shit, they're still entertaining and amusing as fuck. And that's why I still continue to like, love this anime. So anyways, guys, these are my thoughts on the episode. In the comment section below, comment out your thoughts on the episode below. Rate the video, subscribe if you want to see more reviews, and I'll see you guys later. And don't worry, my Subasa and the, um, and the other videos I normally do. Oh, and Tokyo Gold Reader coming later today. All right. Bye-bye.